And this is a culture workshop, but we will have a brief 10 minute introduction before we go out on the lawn and start doing stuff, because it's a workshop. I will start with a formal definition of culture, and I will try to explain a bit the difficult words. It's a shared mental assumption. We all agree in our head. Uh, that guides interpretation and action. That kind of tells us how to interpret and how to act in, in act in an appropriate way for whatever situation. Like for instance, in Norway, if you sit on a morning train, no one talks to each other. And we like to sit alone in the seat. If at the beginning, everyone takes each their seat and try not to sit together. We do that, we know each other. So I was quite terrified when I took the morning train to Barcelona and everyone sat next to someone they didn't know and they started talking together. I was terrified. Okay, next. And so culture is a way of how things work here in this culture, in this setting. Like here at the summer school, uh, we try to be open to each other and support each other and back each other. Yes, and um, this. culture is of course dynamic. It changes in real life and it will change during the game. Like for instance, um, when I grew up in the 80s, 90s, we didn't have cell phones. Totally crazy. And now everyone has cell phones. And that changed the way we work and tick together. Because before I had to say like, okay, you can call me at six o'clock because then I'm home and you can take my telephone. But now you can call anyone almost all the time. Okay? Greta and I, we have been working with, uh, with culture creation workshops together for a few years. We haven't theoreticized about it before, so we are not so used to talking about what we do, but we will show you soon. Um, but when we talk about culture in a lot, what we mean is uh, values, visions, norms, symbols, beliefs, habits, all these small things that is in the LARP. And uh, it's sometimes we can talk about that we are creating a tribe or an organization or maybe a world. It depends a little bit about uh, the LARP, but still it is probably some kind of tribal culture. And it can be, I will give some examples of what I mean with a tribe, because that is not only uh, people in the forest uh, kind of anthropologists uh, researching tribe, tribe. Um, that was a bad example since anthropologists do other kind of stuff as well. This tribe is, uh, I think, maybe some kind of uh, anarchist, hippies, something like that in a collective. They will have their culture in this collective. Uh, from the picture you might get some impression of how it is, but still there is a lot more probably to be said. This is a class, how is their culture, and, and maybe they have some subdivisions that have some cultures, maybe you have the, the football boys that have their own culture within the class, and maybe you have the clever girls that never do anything wrong, that have their own subculture, but they also have a culture together in this class, and probably there is something at the school, and, and uh, in a broader way also. Of course, in the LARP, what is relevant is the culture for those people who are part of the LARP. It can be on a spaceship, you have different tribes here, different races or something, this is from Babylon 5, they will have different cultures that need to be defined and also the overall culture, or a motorcycle club, maybe you have some people doing illegal gambling, some people hitting people who haven't paid their debt, uh, subgroups in this, and you also have the overall culture, how things work here, I think the guy with the sunglasses has a lot of power. Um, <laughs> This is a picture from a game uh, Greta and I've made together with some other people, it's a fancy game, where we use this workshop for the first time. It's a very simple game where you start out with very few preconceptions, but we have, uh, we have defined a little bit, and then we have, we have the mountain people that dig in the caves, we have the, the ocean people that are sailors and fishermen, and then we have the village people who are farmers, and finally we have the horse people of the big fields that are riding horses and, uh, and being far away from everything. 
that was mostly what we gave the players, and then we workshopped the rest of how is this culture really, and that is uh, what we will try to do afterwards. There are different methods for establishing culture. Uh, you can use cultures the players already know, say this is the Babylon 5 world and we will play in that. You can ask the players to, to read up about something, saying we will play in 1943 and read a book about history, learn about this. You can tell the players about some fragments usually, because you will not go on telling for a long time. But if we say, in this game everybody bows to the priest, then we have given a tiny bit of information and you can use this to develop further culture. Some people think it can just be a function of the characters. You just have some characters and then a culture is established automatically. Uh, or you can let some instructed players lead. You have some people in the game that already know what is going on and they, they lead the others and show how stuff is done. Finally, we want to talk about workshopping the culture but that we think should be done more because all the other five alternatives are organizer-driven while workshopping is the only really player-driven culture preparation. And we would also like to maybe suggest, we could think about that, it could be a failure for whether culture is created by organizers or players. So, um, some cons for having a workshop. The organizer gives up control because the players take more responsibility. And it can, of course, replicate player prejudice stereotypes because when you workshop it's easy to just take things out of your head from the way you experience your own world. And it also is time consuming. But still, we want to do it because it treats new and old player alike. Everyone is on the same level. It, it raises awareness of the culture in the game and how you should act on it. And it increases ownership for the players instead of having like a hundred pages cultural companion that very few reads and try to get into the game. And it also gives an easier start of the game. You know how you're supposed to act in this culture instead of like feeling how is this really working and things are a bit slow in the beginning of the game. And it also promotes high resolution play. Maybe you would like to say something about high res and low res. Yeah, it could be like, if I am angry at Greta, uh, can I tell that with just a look? Are we comfortable enough with, it, with the dynamics that just a look and she will understand, no, I am angry? Or will it be so that she are not sure what I mean? Or will I have to do like, I hate you! Then it's low resolution, everybody can see that I hate her. So, <coughs> then we will go out on the lawn and practice this. <laughs> 